On the Radio is brought to you by Zurich Insurance, the perfect place to catch up with all things Melbourne. If you enjoy this content and want more inside access from the team, make sure you visit the club website. For one of the three MVP nominees at aflpa.com.au, uh, and the three that we always have the opportunity to vote for are high quality. Mm-hmm. Well, the highest of quality is amongst them this week. Not because, you know, she was dominant through the middle of the ground. Not because she was dominant, um, you know, picking up uh, errant balls, drifting into her back half and setting up attacks from across the half back line. No, no, no. Mm. This week, she was the, it was, it was Katie Hoare, step aside, please. <laughs> Taylor Harris, get out of my way. Thank you. I want to kick five today. I just want to fill my boots. And that's why Daisy Pierce is in the running for this Pretty sure she was doing the yeah. team thing, Andy. I don't believe so. Oh, dear. She's been good enough to join us. Hello, Daisy. <laughs> G'day, Andy. Hi, Daisy. Five. Um, to be on with you guys. Five massive <laughs> snags, if you don't mind. <laughs> I've got to say, like, as you know, Andy, I've spent most of my career on my knees kind of dishing out dodgy handballs <laughs> in the middle of the ground. And then, you know, post-babies had to... <laughs> try and go and chase someone around across the half back line, but I've played some okay games in those positions. But it's a whole different story when you actually kick goals. I've had you know people left, right, and centre coming out of the woodwork to talk about the goals. I, I mean, if, yeah, you can have a good day anywhere else, but anything the only thing anyone cares about is if you kick goals. <laughs> in fact, I need to apologise right from the word go. Don't bother going for a vote because you've won the vote. Mm. That's my bad. You are the MVP of the week. So there you go. Oh, oh no, that tells you yeah, everything well, you need to know about footy days. I mean, that that is, it's the the <laughs> the, the the glory girls and the glory boys in mm. attack. That that's where all the Hollywood activity takes place. One hundred percent. Well, I um I actually I drifted down there for the last couple of games of last season, and it was kind of in my exit interview that I was only coming back if I could have have the glory of staying up forward for the rest of the year, like for, th- for this next year ahead. So <laughs> it's a lot less stressful than right. down back. Hey, hey yeah. when you think you, you, you've sort of answered the question a little bit, uh, a little less stressful, but is, can you put a degree of difficulty uh, on, on either? Is it harder being up forward than it is being uh, down back? I think there's, there's different challenges. I mean, all come with their pressures, but I think up forward, um, yeah, you're certainly at the mercy a bit more as to how the game is playing out, whether it's kind of on your terms or going to plan. You have to get a bit creative and um, find other ways to get involved in the game and have an impact when the the team as a whole is having a rough day. But, yeah, just different challenges. And I've I've loved, actually, the, the ability to be able to mix around. Like, as I said, I started off in the midfield mm-hmm. for the first couple of years and then played as a defender um, and then now more recently as a forward. So to get an appreciation for all the lines and um, constantly be trying to master a new craft has been really enjoyable. It was a nice day to be in attack. I mean, clearly Fremantle had some issues from a selection perspective prior to the game and they lost some key players, you know, with COVID regulations and other bits and pieces as the Daisy Pierce fan club gets active in the background. <laughs> we appreciate it's a busy house you're the boss of right now, Daisy. But to do what you did to clock the 100 as a team, it was a nice day to be up there. Have you thought much about, and this is no disrespect being asked for you to comment about, about Casey, but the difference in playing in uh, pristine conditions like you did in that massive auditorium over in Perth, compared to what you're used to out in Casey, how much easier does it make it to predictably get on the end of um, balls that are finding their way coming forward? Yeah, it was a pretty special experience and one that a lot of our girls got a, a genuine thrill out of. I mean, that stadium over there is something else. We, we walked into the change rooms and with every new room you walked into yes. and saw the pandangle change rooms and ice baths and the seven different compartments of the, the facility that we got to experience. We just couldn't believe it. And then, yeah, flowed on into the game to go out there and play on an amazing deck. Um, yeah, with the protection of the stadium, I think it, it definitely felt like it made a difference. And as you said, we play on a pretty extreme example out at Casey that we love. Sorry, I had Lion King on and put a Milo in front of us. Right. thought that might buy them 10 minutes. But um, right. obviously not. The punch through that. Um, <laughs> Um, But, yeah, I think it does make a difference. I think the best um, sort of personal account I can give to that is that one of my goals, I actually joked at the time with the girls that I didn't didn't kick it very sweetly and it still went through. And had I kicked it like that at Casey, it probably would have gone out on the full and fallen short. So that's that's probably the best way to sum up the difference is, yeah, like a miskick 
like one of the ones I hit on the weekend that sort of still goes through because you follow through okay. You don't get away with that at Casey. And, yeah, so I think it, it does make a difference. I mean, you're still going to get games that are a bit lower on skill and a bit scrappier. It's just the natural part of sport. But, um, yeah, I, I think I'd like to see it in stadiums a little bit more. Mm. I, I, it's similar at Marvel. I think any game I've ever watched or been a part of there, it's always been a pretty free-flowing game or a more free-flowing game. Hey, Days, one of the uh, high-profile people of the AFLW is Taylor Harris, who's made oh the change God. from uh, yep. Andy's mob to uh, to your mob. Play against one another this week, too. And it's going to be a cracker, yep. and it should be, hopefully, you know, we see, like... Nah, there'll be some spirit, be I reckon. Bit, I reckon there'll be... It's going to be pretty spirited, yeah, I reckon. Yeah. What do you uh, – are we going to – firstly, are we going to – do you think there'll be some sort of spirited behaviour out there? And secondly, just talk about the impact that she's had uh, with your with your team. Well, I hadn't put a lot of thought into it, but now that you've got the Carlton runner saying that it's going to be spirited, <laughs> oh, no, I we'll just prepare for no, it. It's it sounds only, like he's going to rev the girls up. No, 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 no they'll, they'll know. they know exactly how good a player she is and how well she's going. So they'll be <laughs> – it's a great test for our young back line. Mm. When you're running into a team... No, like, no, 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 don't try and no, no, it sugar is. Coat it. No, it is. You're running up against a multiple All-Australian who's who, Days, is probably playing the best footy of Eddie, her AFLW career. we all know there was a little bit of uh, argy-bargy so with the way in which she moved on. <laughs> I'm just, let's, let's, let's have Daisy have her say, please. No, no, I think, I don't know, Andy, my impression is, is that a lot of the Carlton girls still love her. They and, do. Um, spend a lot of time with her. They're still a big part of her friendship group. But she's she's been amazing, Taylor. I've, I've always had a, a soft spot from afar for Tay, just um, her, her sheer ability. She's a bit quirky, <laughs> which I've loved about her. And I've never known her really, really well. But I tell you what, the soft spot's gotten softer since she arrived at the club <laughs> because she's worked, worked her absolute butt off. Um, she's got a huge heart and cares deeply about her teammates. She's humble. Um, so a lot of things that probably weren't the way she was being described um, in the media kind of when, when we got her, um, she's been every bit of the, the best teammate that you could ask for. And she's just gone about learning her role and applying herself to that. She hasn't wanted anything more, but it's a funny thing that when you chip away at that, you know, all of her individual kind of stats and performances have looked after themselves but yeah it's a pleasure to watch and you know play alongside her every weekend uh she sort of makes my job a little bit easier there's been a bit of talk about me helping her but the way she draws three defenders certainly helps me at yeah, times as well so, hey um she's she's something unique like i've you don't see someone take aerial marks like taylor does and when she kicks the ball if you're standing five meters away from her the sound that it makes like yeah. i just feel privileged to kind of get to watch her do her thing up close and especially when she's in the form like she is. Mm. Daisy, you got Daisy Pierce on the line. You've got a lot in front of you, potentially. You've got a lot in front of you that we know about, obviously. Um, how would, when you put all that into the mix, if it is to be the next season starting in August, how does that impact any decisions that you might have to make about whatever is in front of you? Yeah, oh, um, oh, the start time of the season would be a very small part of the decision. Um, I think it's more where, you, where your heart's at at the end of it. I still absolutely am loving playing my, my footy. Like To go down to footy is one of the absolute highlights of my week, which might be controversial to say when you're a mother and got two beautiful children to come home to. But um, I do love, I still love going down to footy and immersing myself in the cycle of the week, you know, preparing for an opposition. We got our Carlton Oppo meeting tomorrow night, Andy, and I just bounce into those meetings <laughs> just, um, you know, all ears and can't wait to, for the battle ahead on the weekend. So, um, yeah, that's at the forefront of my mind at the moment. But, yeah, at the end of this year, as we have every year, sit down with Ben and the family and everyone that it takes to help me go around each year and, um, yeah, make a decision on whether we've got another one in us or whether, you know, I'm satisfied. But, yeah, right now it's focus on what the opportunity is at hand and it's a good one and one that we as the Ds look forward to. So there's footy, there's broadcasting, there's potentially coaching, there's potentially playing, there's family. coaching at well, I just the mentioned, AFL I just mentioned that. Level. That'll all play itself mm-hmm. and we're all going to be keen observers on whatever takes place next and all the stuff that we know is happening to you guys. Good luck Saturday night. Uh, I say that from the bottom of my heart. I hope you lose, but hopefully you have a great <laughs> night. That's not uh, very You've nice. got the finals to look forward to uh, one way or the other, but a win, we know what a win means for you and your teammates. It, sizes, it secures a spot in the top two. 
and that carries a fairly significant uh, bonus. Thanks for coming on. We'll um we'll see you soon. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Gazy. Have good a good you. one. Good see you, Daisy. Yeah, we will indeed. No worries.